When I was first introduced to Divine Truth through a, through a friend in Coffs Harbour, my soul was singing and I even did some emotional processing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now that I'm back home, I avoid feeling emotions and I can't make myself watch another DVD. <laughs> And I'm guessing that the divine love path is very long and challenging. And just want, I just wanted to ask you if you had felt this same way that I do now. <laughs> Maybe you could give me a few ideas for getting back in touch with my emotions. Well, I suppose there's a lot of things I could say here. Um, many people do experience this thing that happens, which is, you become right at the beginning quite enthusiastic about the new external truths that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. And then as you go on, you realise that there's internal things that you're going to have to face. And so you shut down completely and you don't want to do any more and you don't want to watch any more and you don't want to listen to any more and you don't want to know any more and you don't want to pray any more and (laughs) you don't want to do anything, right? And, uh, And it's quite clear what's happening, I feel, for a person who's doing this. Firstly, they don't want to come face to face with the personal truth in their lives. So, so the first step is to try to come face to face. Now, she asked me the question, have I ever been through that? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. But the reason why I haven't is because I want to come face to face with the personal truth in my life. I don't feel resistive to divine truth ever. I'm always fascinated by God and God's truths. Mm -hmm. And and I feel that everybody would be unless they have some major blocks or major fears or major addictions that they don't want to give up. Now, for for the average person who comes into contact with divine truth, there is a lot of addictions initially for them. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people are very, very happy to find out about external truth. So they're very happy to find out that God's loving and not not a punishing God and they're very happy to find out, you know, the the way the universe is constructed and they're very happy to find out there's a spirit world and there's life after death and all are very happy about all of those external, what I would call knowledge-based things about the universe. But when it comes to personal reflection, they become very, very unhappy Mm. and they're very resistive. They do not wish to go through anything personally. They don't want to feel anything. They don't want to feel their personal pain and they don't want to progress and connect to their emotions and connect to the emotional pain that's stored within them. And that is usually because there's a lot of anger then there's a lot of addictions that the anger drives, you know, mm-hmm. is driven, that drives the anger, sorry. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of fears that uh, are usually underneath the person being so resistive. Mm-hmm. Now, this lady is very angry about having to make any personal progress. And while we can remain in this kind of anger for long periods of time, the question we've got to ask ourselves is what do we really want? How am I going to use my will? See, if I really want a relationship with God, I won't let such things stop me. If I really want to continue growing for the rest of my existence, I won't let a few emotions, a few few painful emotions, and when I say a few, it might be 10 years of painful emotions uh, for some people, but it's highly unlikely if they allowed their emotions all the time. Mm -hmm. But, But let's say it is 10 years. Surely 10 years of some painful emotions is worth like thousands of years of joy, like in terms of making that progress. So I feel firstly a person who's in this state does not have faith in God, does not have faith that they actually can work through emotions. They don't have faith that actually the way is about having to do soul-based work on emotions. (laughs) And they want there to be some other way of getting closer to God. Mm -hmm. And there is no other way. And I think it's wonderful that there's no other way because you can't manufacture it. You can't skip over things. You've got to be really sincere to be on this path. So my suggestion to this lady and others is the question really is, are you sincere about truth? And I'm I'm suggesting to you that if you're resistive to personal truth, then you're not really sincere about truth. Mm -hmm. And, and you can say, then later say to God, oh, well, I didn't know this and I didn't know that. But if you're resistive to personal truth, it, that's the exercise of your will to resist the truth. 
And that's and you can't blame anybody other than yourself for that. Mm -hmm. And you can't blame your parents for that. You can't blame your childhood for that. You can't blame all the painful emotions even inside of you for that. You, that's your personal resistance to mm -hmm. truth and you need to somehow decide to work your way through it. Now, usually when a person is this resistive, they're usually angry mm -hmm. that they have to do it. And usually that anger is a lot around things like, Somebody else put these emotions in me, so somebody else should have to take them out <laughs> type yeah. of reasoning. Some, you know, wanting to blame other people for the pain that you feel and all of these kind of feelings are a part of the anger. Now, the anger is an indication that you're in addiction mm -hmm. and also that you uh, don't understand love at all, actually, because any person who gets angry regularly does not understand love at all. So, so my suggestion there is, Face up to your addictions. Be honest about them. Be truthful about them. Do you even really want to progress? Because if you don't really want to progress, why, why bother even doing it? Mm -hmm. Like there's no, there's no, if there's no internal desire in you to progress on the path, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. But you are going to bear the consequences of such decision. You are. You're going to have a, a much less happy life in the long term. You are also going to have much more struggle in your life in the short and long terms because you're resistive to God's whole universal structure of love. And if you're honest with yourself, you don't really want to become more loving. So, so you've got to look at why you wouldn't want to become more loving. Now, sometimes that's anger that is driving that. Sometimes it's addictions driving that. And sometimes it's fear driving that. So for, for the person who's angry, then there's a lot of usually justifying emotions for their rage. Uh, for the person who's in their addictions, they just don't want to get rid of their addictions because if they, they're afraid that if they get rid of their addictions, there'll be nothing left. And that's often the case once you start doing that. So they don't want to get rid of their addictions and they definitely don't want to come face to face with their fears mm -hmm. and have to work their way through them as a child would work through, their way through these emotions. So I feel this is a very important thing that we need to at some point decide that we're going to actually feel these child like emotions that are still locked up within us mm -hmm. and that we actually use our will in a positive manner to become more loving. And the only way we're going to become more loving from God's perspective is by removing from ourselves through experiencing these emotions, removing the emotions that cause us to be unloving. Mm -hmm. and, and if we're not sincere about that process, yes, you're going to find the divine truth path or the way very, very difficult. In fact, impossible. Because God's constructed it such, such, in such a manner. God's constructed it that you have to be sincere. You have to have a true longing for, for God and you have to have a true longing to know the truth about yourself and the truth about the universe. And you can't just know the truth about the universe and ignore all the truths about yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you're living in a universe and everything that happens to you is going to be based around loving laws, trying to correct your unloving ways. And so, of course, it, it, and, and how long it takes is going to be completely dependent upon how willing you are. So if you're very unwilling, it's going to take hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years, right? And there's many people that have taken tens of thousands of years. So, so that, that's an exercise of your will. Or it can only take a few years if you exercised your will differently, yeah. but, but it's going to depend a lot upon you. So some of the questions are, I feel, I don't know, demonstrate a lack of faith in God, demonstrate a lack of faith in the way mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm not saying she has to have faith in God or faith in the way, but, but does she want to have? Yeah. Does, you know, how, what does she want to do with her life? And also she's basically saying that she's guessing the divine love path is very long and challenging. <laughs> and, and I go, well, no, the divine love path is actually forever. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, not just long. long, it's going to be the rest of your life <laughs> forever, you know. So, so I suppose that's very, 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 very long <laughs> if, if you look at it that way. But, but it's only challenging when we resist everything. And this is what I find quite strange is that people uh, have all of these challenges on the path and they don't acknowledge that the challenges are a direct result of their own resistance. So can I ask you about challenges then? Because it seems to me that challenges are difficult when we resist them, mm -hmm. but we can have challenges that we embrace and they actually, so the error, for example, is going to be challenged by truth. Oh. But if we're willing, part 
party to that challenge, then it, it's not such an arduous or difficult thing to face that challenge. Is that correct? No, you, you enjoy every challenge yep. because you feel like, oh, this is another opportunity to grow. You see, once you've received some of God's love, you're a very positive person. Yeah. You're very optimistic. <laughs> so you're not pessimistic at all. You don't think, oh, isn't this terrible? This is going to last forever, or any of those kind of things. <laughs> you feel completely the opposite of that because you've received some of God's love. You know that it, God's optimistic. God's optimistic that you can go do it. God mm-hmm. created your soul to do it. You understand these things. And so you feel very optimistic about every challenge. And so you don't even see them really as a challenge. You just see them as, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to grow and to change. And and why wouldn't I take the opportunity? It's an opportunity God's given me right in this moment to do that. So yeah. I, I, I don't even see them really as challenges. I just see them more as events that my soul attracts to demonstrate to me where I'm out of harmony with love and I have the option and of course I desire to always take that option uh, to to actually see the truth of what is really going on to feel about the causal emotions that exist in me that attracted the event Mm -hmm. and once I do I know that I'm never going to have to go through that experience again isn't that wonderful most people in their day-to-day life every single day have similar experiences that are negative and they go through them the next day, the next day, the next day, and they have no hope that it's not going to happen again Mm -hmm. because they don't know how to stop it from happening. And I feel like the way shows you how to stop it from all happening, to actually embrace a life that is much more positive, much more enjoyable, and and also you feel much more inner joy because you know you're working your through, way through your fears, you're getting rid of addictions, you know you're becoming a more loving person, that love is demonstrated through your actions to other people and, and also to yourself. You, you become happier as a result, not sadder, happier mm-hmm. as a result. And, and so I feel that th- there are so many positive benefits of following the way for the rest of your existence. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do it? I can't understand why a person would choose not to do it. Yeah. Now, because of her choices to resist her rage and resist her addictions and resist knowing about her fears and feeling them and to, to resist feeling her inner pain, which is the real problem, um, of course she's going to be shut down to emotions. Yeah. And of course you're not going to want to watch any DVDs about divine truth. Like, fair enough. Why watch something that's just going to tell you you need to connect to something that you don't want to connect to? Um, my suggestion to her is to, is to look at the reasons why mm-hmm. rather than ignoring the reasons why. Why doesn't she want to? And a lot of times why is all about I'm afraid, I'll lose my family, I'll lose my friends, I'm afraid. And, and when we start listing it all down, we find that there's literally hundreds of reasons why we don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. But, but to me, no matter how many reasons why we don't want to do it, the reasons for doing it are far more powerful and, and, and outweigh any reason that we could have for not doing it. Mm-hmm. And that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me progressing forward. And I suggest to her that's one of the things that she also would need to do. She would need to see the real good reasons for doing it. Yeah. And if she doesn't, then talk about that. Ask questions about that, you know. Sure. So that you can can gain some faith, so that you feel a lot more comfortable and confident about that there's a good reason to do it. And I feel the best reason is to have a relationship with the creator of the universe. That's the best reason. The second best reason is I get to have a relationship with the other half of myself and myself that's real, truthful, honest and full of love. Mm -hmm. And then I also get to be a more loving person in all of my interactions with other people. And as a result of that, I also attract more loving interactions with other people. Now, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't you want to choose those things? And whatever excuses or reasons you've come up with for not doing it, none of them are any as large as those reasons for doing it. Yeah. yeah. So if I recap a little on what <laughs> sure. you said, yeah. um, that's very motivating what yeah. you've just been saying. Uh, but it is something that we commonly hear from people, look, I'm just so emotionally shut down and this lady's asking, how can I get back in touch with my emotions? And you've listed quite a few things that obviously this lady is in resistance to. Mm. So you listed um, 
a resistance to personal truth? Well, let's start even before then. Okay. The, she has no faith that doing it will actually benefit her in any way. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yep. And then she's got, because she has no faith, she's got a complete resistance to personal truth. Yep. Right? So, so at some stage, faith has to be developed in the process. Right? Yeah. Now, the only way you can really develop faith in a process is to engage the process and see what the outcome is. Once you've engaged the process enough and you see the outcome is consistently good, then you go, why would I not do this? You know? yeah. so, so she needs to build her faith. And, and the only way you can really build your faith is by engaging a process as an experiment and seeing what the outcomes are, truly are, mm -hmm. and then allowing yourself to measure that and, and remember that. So I feel that's where she needs to start. Then once she has enough faith, she'll perhaps want to have a look at all of her resistance to personal truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, the resistance to personal truth is an issue, but it's probably the second issue. So if we say the first issue is almost a resistance to something you alluded to earlier, external truth, the fact that it's worthwhile and that we can have faith in the process. Yes. Uh, then a resistance to personal truth. Yes. Uh, resistance to seeing addictions. Yes. And anger and fear. Well, a resistance to fear, not just seeing them, but feeling, feeling them. them. Sorry. So feeling her anger, feeling her addictions and feeling her fear and feeling her pain. Mm -hmm. and, and she's worried that her life will change. So she doesn't want to do it. Mm. And don't, if you mm -hmm. don't want to do it, don't. Well, but you're going to bear the consequence of not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, don't, I don't advise it, but <laughs> what else can you say? <laughs> you're allowed to make the choice to not do it. God says to you, you're allowed to be where you are right now for the rest of your existence if that's what you want. The question I would ask myself if I was her is, do I want that? Do I want to live the current life that I have for the rest of my existence? Because that's what I'm going to do if I don't change. Hmm. And if I, if I don't embrace some kind of change that's real, I'm going to live this life, not only all the way through my life in, in, on earth, but I'm going to live it also in the spirit world. It's going to be a pretty mundane life for the rest of my existence unless I decide to do something different. Yeah. And my suggestion to her is there's plenty of motivation to do something different. There's plenty of you know, truth to, that would motivate you to do something different. You've just got a question about whether you really believe any of it. Yes. And the only way you can improve your belief is by reading, studying, you know, improve experimenting, experimenting. Mm -hmm. and and to do that, you're going to probably have to watch a few DVDs to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I think it's it's a an interesting question in that I know a lot of people who just sort of say, "Oh, I was feeling emotion, oh, and the emotions ran out. Sort of, they went away." <laughs> and <laughs> yes. I th I'm so amused by that because that's that's an indication that fear and addiction has just kicked in. Exactly. And yeah. I suppose that's what I wanted to highlight because I've been one of those people where you just go, oh, it's all gone and dried up. <laughs> and it's easy to sort of throw your hands up and go, oh, that's nothing to do with me. I wonder what it is and, and sort of not really think it's actually because there's something that I want to avoid right now, a fear yeah. or an addiction yeah. um, that... I'm, co I'm purposefully avoiding, which yeah. has caused the emotions to dry up. Because yeah. I know when we first met, I just thought emotions were like, what are emotions? I don't know. <laughs> well, I didn't even like having them. And yeah, well, when I started, I didn't know what they were either. So that's yeah. okay. I feel yeah. that everybody gets to that stage. But, but, but to get beyond any of these stages, you've got to develop a desire and that's an exercise of your will. Do you mm -hmm. want to have a desire to yes. get closer to God, closer to love, to become a more loving person, yeah. to receive some of God's love to, so your soul transforms? Do you want that or don't you? Yeah. Now, now, a person who just does a little bit of progress and then stops, my suggestion is your desire isn't that big. It's not that big. Mm -hmm. And so what would you do to develop your desire? You'd have yeah. to work through your fears that you have but you'd also have to look at your will. Yes. Do you really want truth? Do you really want love? Do yeah. you, you know, or what do you really feel about those things? Yeah. You're going to have to have a little bit more stronger self-analysis rather than just asking Jesus, what's my problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that probably goes for a lot of questions, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel a lot, and this is the thing with these emotion questions, I think we've covered a lot of the basic yeah. issues regarding emotions already, right? And a lot of these individual questions, while they're interesting, 
um, and give us a way to illustrate the problems that, mm -hmm. that people face. At the end of the day, um, asking somebody else as to what's going on for yourself, while it can help mm -hmm. you work through what's going on for yourself, you've got to first ask yourself, how strong is your personal desire to really do it anyway? To, know. to, yeah. to really know anyway. You know, I, like honestly, I often, I often see that the biggest issue people face is the lack of, the, of, a, of a strong will to, to actually want to love, to want to know truth no matter what. Now, even if I die finding it, like people, there's very, very little of that. People want to have mundane existences because they get to avoid a whole heap of things and, and they like avoidance. They like their addictions being met. They want comfort. They, you know, basically they want to be nursed by a mummy all mm -hmm. the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They don't want to grow up and become a self-functioning, self-sufficient adult who has a relationship with God, a relationship with love, a relationship with truth that is, that is unbreakable. And, and unable and immovable, unable to be moved by any event or situation or person in their life. And to become that kind of a person, which is the kind of person you will become when you, when you become at one with God, you've got to go through quite a lot of stuff first. You've got to work your way through and be sincere about working your way through a lot of very negative emotions that you've imbibed through your life and also a lot of the, your own bad choices that you made that you need to repent for before you'll become that person. And, and my suggestion is it's worth it. And, and like, I, I'm shocked that anybody thinks it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand that when you begin, um, for a lot of people, they realise that their will isn't very well developed and they have very little faith and they've only ever wanted to have their ears tickled, mm -hmm. as the Bible says, and not really want to have to work through issues. And, and this is a problem that we face on the planet. You know, the, the, we live in a society now, particularly Western society, where everything's about instant gratification. Yeah. So if, it, if, if we do five minutes of spiritual progression, we think, oh, it should be all over now. Mm -hmm. You know, we do 10 minutes of crying, oh, that's finished. You know, and, and to be frank, no, it didn't enter you in 10 minutes. Yeah. It entered you over years and years and years, mm -hmm. generally, of oppression. How, do you, how can you expect that something that's entered you over years and years and years is only going to take 10 minutes, half an hour, days, weeks, or even months? It's going to take you years, to be frank. Yeah. And, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about that because it's already there and you're just carrying it around anyway. And if you don't do anything about it, you're going to keep carrying around cause keep causing yourself damage, causing other people damage, never having a relationship with God, never being the powerful expression of the person you could be. And, and so, like, why would you want to choose that? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to choose that from a logical perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would just encourage this lady to, do, to, to look at those things that we've mentioned. In amongst those things are some of the reasons why she stopped emotional processing. Yeah. And, and honestly... Um, once she works through those feel feelings, she'll probably feel attracted to listening or watching some DVDs or not DVDs anymore, though, <laughs> videos on YouTube or whatever. And, and she'd also probably be much more attracted to really developing her relationship with God, her relationship with herself, her relationship with her soulmate, developing the love that comes out of her, her wanting to know the truth about her life, not only external things, but wanting to know the truth about her life, yeah. what's happened to her, the feelings that she has, and feeling those feelings because she's going to feel alive when she does. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend to her. Yeah, mm. yeah it really is worth it, hey? Yeah. <laughs>